So feet together, right hand makes a fist, represents yang, left hand represents yin. We bow from the hips and come on up. Step out to shoulder distance. And we're just shifting our weight from one foot to the other. Just being, getting loose, letting the joints soften up, feeling our connection to the earth, feeling our center of gravity. Take a deep breath in and sigh it out slow. Try to keep those knees from collapsing. We're going to try to keep them pushed out to the sides, pointing in the same direction as the toes. Each time you shift, you come to the center, imagine you're being lifted from the crown of the head. And each time you sink, it's like you're doing a very small squat on one leg, allowing the hips to go back, the chest to go down, the knees soften up, the arms get loose, and you just feel your bones stack. Good, then come to center, slow it down. We're gonna feel nice and tall, crown of the head reaches up, chin down, chest relaxed, pelvis tucked, belly soft, knee soft. And then we're gonna turn from the waist, swinging the hips from side to side, allowing the arms to go loose and free, swinging arms like ropes. Imagine there's no control in the arms no bones, no muscles. It's just the hips moving and everything above it is just floppy. Except the spine, the spine stays straight and strong. Pay attention to the breath, making sure that you inhale and exhale all the way, using your whole torso. And slow it down, coming back to center. Good. And put the hands on the belly, soften up the knees, shift the weight over, bring one foot in and out. We're going to do heel toe. So you're going to point the toe, point, point the toe, flex the heel. Point the toe, flex the heel. Loosening up those ankles. Keeping that standing knee soft if you can, if your body allows for it. I'd like to remind everybody that if something doesn't feel right or if your body tells you not to do it, listen to your body. It knows better what you need than I do. If at any point, start to go from inside to outside. If at any point you feel like you need to sit down, please do. Um, you can do anything that you can do standing from a chair. So if we're doing weight shifting, you'll just be shifting from one buttock to the other instead of from one foot to the other. Good, and then you're gonna bring that foot in, step out to the heel, that knee stays soft, that toe stays soft, then you shift over, other foot comes in, goes out, and we're gonna flex and point. Don't forget to breathe. Everything we do is with the breath. Good. And inside, outside. Lightly applying pressure, keeping that knee soft. You're not really shifting your weight onto that foot. Bring that foot back, step to the heel, shift over. Find that stability again on the standing foot. And I'm gonna ask you to do something that might feel a little bit strange at first. I want you to draw little circles on the ground with your toe. If this is something that you don't feel like you can do um, and maintain your balance, uh, you can always do 
knee hip ankle circles instead. If you can, try to do this. This is a great way to activate the hip flexors. Both the standing and the moving hip flexors are working. It's great for balance. It's great for opening the hips. Good, and when you get to the inside, reverse, go the other way. If at any point you need to pause and find your stability again, you can do that too. Good, come onto the center, step to the heel, then the toe, then shift over. Other foot comes in. Find that center line. Imagine you've got a fireman pole going down through the center of the body, bolting you to the ground. And then start the circles on that side. You can make them small, or if you've got stronger legs, you can make them bigger. You can turn them into sweeps. If you want a challenge, just make sure that if you're doing that, you're not sinking that knee forward, but you're sinking the hips back. You're keeping that spine straight. When you get to the center, take a moment, catch your breath. Strengthen that core, tuck that pelvis, and we reverse. Good. Very good. Don't forget to breathe. Good. One more. When you get to the center, step to the heel, to the toe and center. Feet are about shoulder width apart and we're going to do hulas. Keeping the knees soft, trying to keep the head and chest more or less where it is and just moving the hips around that central axis. Trying to allow the breath to flow in and out, all the way filling up the lungs, filling up the whole torso. When you get to the front, reverse, go the other way. If the circle's too much, you can always do the corners, so forward, side, back, side, and then you can always turn it into a circle. Good. Good. And when you get to the front, straight and up, we're going to walk the feet a little bit wider. We're going to draw the bow. So you want the feet about 1.5 to 2 shoulder widths apart. Even if you're not going to sink low, I want you to have a nice sturdy base. The knees are slightly bent and pointing in the same direction as the toes, which is about 45 degrees out. If you want a challenge, you can go low. If you are like, nope, you can stay up tall, that's okay too. So we're going to inhale, cross the hands over, take a breath out, sink the weight, tuck the tailbone, drop the chest. You're going to take another breath in, one elbow points to the wall, the other hand opens, open the chest, exhale, sink the arms, sink the tailbone, inhale, exhale, sink the tailbone, lengthen the spine, soften the elbows, inhale, pulling the hand that's pushing away, pulling those fingers up if you can. Open the chest, bring the shoulder blades together. Exhale, sink. Inhale. Exhale, sinking the tailbone. Now, if you want to, you could add a weight shift. So as you inhale, you shift over, turn the hips. And then exhale, sink. Center the weight. Inhale, open, shift, turn. Exhale, sink. Good. 
Inhale, open, shift, turn. Exhale, sink. Inhale. And exhale. And walk the feet back together. Good. So we'll um, separate heaven and earth. So bringing the hands to the center of the torso. One presses up, the other one presses down. Stretching. Exhale, tuck the tailbone slightly, drop the chest slightly. Inhale, stretching the crown of the head up and away from the tailbone. Stretching down the sides, exhale. Inhale. Good, try to keep the shoulders level if you can. Exhale. So we're trying to not do this. You're trying to stay upright. Exhale. Good. Putting these fingers up will give you a little bit of a stretch down the side. Exhale. Inhale. And back to center. And palms down. Take a deep breath in. Push away the walls as you exhale. Then in and sink as you exhale. Again, in, push away the walls. As you exhale, in and out. Inhale, exhale. Inhale, One more. Inhale. Exhale. Inhale. Exhale. Good. Bringing up the hands. Um, you're going to hold them middle fingers up. We're going to swing pinky and thumb around middle finger. Take some deep breaths. We've got a participant outside the room. It's great, I love it. Take some deep breaths. And then float the palms down. up and down. Good. Let's do the neck a little bit. So bringing the hands up, we're going to exhale, look the other way. Push. Inhale. Exhale. Dragon looks at its tail. Inhale. You can go at your own pace. Inhaling as you come to the center. Exhaling as you look over the side and push. Inhale. Elbows stay heavy and pointing to the ground. And never force that neck into a position it doesn't like. And one more inhale and drop the hands. We're going to um, <coughs> This one's called falling asleep on a wagon. So um, it's really, the head is not doing anything. The head's just going to be kind of heavy uh, and you're just going to tilt the shoulder. So you're going to inhale, looking at the ceiling and then exhale. Just let that neck, neck relax. So now you're slightly hanging forward. You're going to tilt one of your shoulders to the side without any control in your neck and your head should loll over to that side. And you're gonna tilt the shoulders back to the front and then over to the other side. So now the wagon's going downhill again and you tilt back to the front and then you tilt over to the side. Maybe you're driving on a slope. This is before suspension. Back to the front, 
over to the side. If you don't have neck issues, you can turn this into a full circle. I do have neck issues, so I'm not going to do it. But to turn it into a full circle, you just lean back, bending the knees, and then lean the other way. Um, I'm not even gonna do the reverse of that because my neck would be very mad at me if I did. Coming to the front. Whenever you're at the front again, come up slow. Good. So you're gonna cross the hand over, grab a hold of, in the middle of your shoulder, at, right at the top, press around there and then if you do, it doesn't hurt pressing there turn go down the back until you find that spot where it really hurts and push on it and then you're going to take a deep breath in and exhale and roll taking deep breaths in and out rolling that shoulder so there's two pressure points right here both of them are connected to releasing tension and stress in the neck, shoulders, and head, headaches, discomfort, stress. A lot of us tend to hold a lot of tension in our shoulders. When your shoulders are tense, your center of gravity is up taller, and that's not great for falls. And drop the shoulder, reverse, find that spot on the, in the middle of the other side, might be on top or it might be the one at the back today, um, both of those spots uh, do sort of the same thing and as you take some deep breaths, you see a lot of pain on your faces. It doesn't, you don't have to push so hard that you wanna go take a Tylenol. Um, just apply gentle pressure. Think of um, lubricating that spot on the inhale and as you exhale, you release some tension. Good. And drop that arm. So for this one, the easy version is just up like this and release. Um, so on an inhale, you're going to scrunch everything up. On an exhale, you're just going to drop everything down. If you, if you are up for a bit of a challenge, you can raise the heels up and then bounce down, bending the knees and the hips as you do, okay? So inhale, <sighs> exhale through the mouth, three of these, inhale. Warrior breaths. Inhale. One more. Good. And shake it out. Give it a good shake. Okay, let's take a sip of water. So we're going to start. We're going to find our Uji posture. So hands on the lower Dantian. If you want to, you can interlace them, um, applying some very light pressure to this point over here, which helps with relaxation. Take a deep breath in, sigh it out. So the feet are about shoulder distance apart. The toes are either straight forward, big toes point straight forward, or they point ever so slightly out. The knees are soft. Make sure that your feet are flat on the ground. Um, if you had suction cups, one here, 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 and here, you want them all to be attached to the ground firmly, so don't roll the feet. Knees push out like you're sitting on a small horse or you have a little ball between your legs, like a beach ball. Knees are soft, pelvis is tucked, belly, if you had a ball in your belly you want to support that ball so it doesn't fall out the front. Chest is down, so we tend to stand like this in the West and drop that chest. Shoulders are relaxed, straightening out that spine as much as you can. You won't be able to see it because I've got a mic back in the back here, but as much as you can straighten out that spine. 
without causing tension or discomfort. Chin goes back, reaching for the heavens with the crown of the head, like you're a marionette or a, um, a puppet on a string. Elbow soft, fold forward ever so slightly from the crease between the legs and the torso, allowing the buttocks to soften up, allowing the hips to go back ever so slightly. If you drop your arms, you're kind of standing like a monkey, right? Monkeys fall out of trees, they get up, but they keep going. Hands back on the Dantian. Observe your body. Observe your breath. Do you feel like your breath is stuck in your chest or in your throat? Do you feel like it's creating tension in your collarbone? or your shoulders as you inhale. See if you can sink that breath down to the belly. If you feel like you have a hard time releasing the belly as you inhale, you can shift forward and backward on your feet ever so slightly, just until you find a spot where the breath flows more easily into the belly. On your exhale, try to see if you can feel that connection with the ground. Feel like you're getting heavier in the bottom of your body. Like your belly is getting heavy and growing roots into the ground. Find and collect any tension you don't need in your posture or in your body and release it, let it go. Breathe it out. Just notice how your bones are naturally stacked on top of each other. You don't have to do very much to keep your body upright. It does that all by itself. Now on your next inhale, I want you to slowly shift your weight over to one of your feet, one of your legs, turning the hips slightly in that direction and relax. Then when you inhale again, slowly shift that weight back over. And as you exhale, sink and relax into that leg. You can walk the other toe out a little bit if it feels awkward. Inhaling, shifting out. And as you exhale, sink a little bit deeper into that leg. The hip of the hip, uh, the full leg comes back a little bit and you turn towards those toes. Inhale. Exhale. Imagine the foot, the leg that you're standing on is filled with water. And as you inhale, you slowly pour that water over to the other leg. And you want, every time you inhale, shift the weight. And as you exhale, sink. So imagine you're pouring that water over from one leg into the other. And you don't want that water to spill. You don't want it to splash or bubble, go at your own pace, observe your own body, and make whatever adjustments you need to make. Be careful that you're not leaning over that leg, you're stacked, you're nice and strong. Also be careful that we're not twisting the shoulders perpendicular to the hips. Anytime you do that, you're in no control of your um, weight. It's very easy for me to move you if I see your shoulders perpendicular to your hips. So you can think of uh, your upper body as a frame, uh, a chassis of sorts, and it just stays connected, shoulders over hips. 
You don't want it to flex. Good. Now the next time you get your weight over to your right leg, you can bring your left heel off the ground, bring that toe in. Your hips should be pointing towards your right toes right now. So what I want you to do is remember those little circles we made at the beginning? You're going to make half a circle like that. So you find a spot that's nice and wide and also a little bit of a step forward. There you're going to place the heel with the toes pointing 45 degrees out and then you're going to place the toes and shift the weight onto that foot, turning the hips in the direction of that foot until the back one is empty. Stand on that foot, let the toes, let the heel come up so that just the toes touching, bring in that foot and relax. So the other toe makes that little circle. You turn the hips in that direction, place the heel, place the toes and slowly shift the weight over, lifting that back heel, relaxing and then bringing it in. We're going to have to back up. So take a couple of steps back. We'll do this again. So feet are about shoulder width apart. Toes are slightly turned out. Knees are pushed in the direction of the toes. Shift the weight to your right leg, turning the hips to that, in the direction of those toes. Bring that toe in, it's empty. And make your little half circle. Place the heel, turning the hips in the direction of the foot you're gonna go to. Place the toe and then shift the weight over and bring up that heel and bring it in. And make your little circle. Place that heel, hips point towards that toe. Place the toe and then shift the weight over slowly, bringing up the back heel. Relax and bring it in. Good, circling. Place that foot, it's empty. If you're stepping on a marble or a Lego or a cat, you can still go, I'm not gonna fall. Place the toe and shift and bring it in. One more, turn the hips place and shift good and bring that foot in do you guys feel up, feel up for a challenge some backwards stepping stay where you are so we're going to do the same thing but we're going to do it backwards so you're just going to touch your toe behind you not very far if you have to lean it's too far so just a gentle touch behind you and then as you place that heel you turn the hips until you're standing on that toe and then bring this one in you can place the hands on the hips if it helps you. Touch that toe behind you, not very far, also not too scrunched in, but like a nice comfortable distance. And then as you place that heel, you turn the hips so that the hips are pointing in the direction of those toes by the time you have your weight on this foot. Then bring the other one in. And touch that toe behind you, turning the hips, placing that heel. By the time you get your weight on that foot, you have your hips in the same direction as the toe. Good, give it a shake out. We tend to, when we walk, we kind of lift the foot and then we fall onto it, which is just a bad idea in general for various reasons. I'm sure you can figure that out. Uh, if there's something in the way, you have, you're going down. So, um, so stepping with intention, try to bring a little bit more intention to your walk this week. That's my, that's my challenge to you. So every time you walk, go, am I falling onto this foot before I um, put my weight or before I get a firm footing? Or am I finding my footing and then shifting my weight? Okay. So let's go, what, how much time do we have? Okay. So. Uh, let's review the Tai Chi opening. So come back to a spot where you've got room to move. Okay. Great. So feet shoulder width apart. <sighs> Deep breath in and out. Who was not here last time when we did the sitting on the chair thing? Okay. 
So let's do that again. So grab a chair. I try to put them close to you so you can grab one. Are you doing that like I'm, I'm going to be on camera thing? Like with the newscasters? <laughs> okay. So now that everybody's got a chair handy, do you still need a chair? Okay. So, so you've got a chair handy. I want you to stand in front of your chair, not quite directly against it, but not too far away either. Your feet are about shoulder width apart. Your knees are nice and strong. And now I want you to bring the hands up and then sink the hips back slowly and take a seat on your chair. Everybody okay with that? Mm -hmm. yes. Show me which muscles you're using for that. The thigh muscles. Anything else? Glutes. Your glutes, right? Your butt. Okay, so the butt's more especially when we come up. So for this one, we're going to reach forward with the hands, tilt forward ever so slightly, squeeze the butt and come up and squeeze it forward. Try to bring, push the knees out. Yeah, it gives you a lot more strength when you do that. Okay, and hands down. So again, inhale. So you're not going to push the knees forward, right? You're going to push the butt back and sink. Good. And then we're going to do one more forward. And squeeze the buttocks as you come up. If you need to, you can always use your knees as a lever. So you can bend down, put the hands on the knees. Uh, you can, if you push the elbows out, you've got more stability because uh, then you're using the strength of the chest muscles. Sink the knees backward and then come up. And then you can lean forward and you're, this is a, this is one bone going down to your heel, right? So you can push up on that bone to help you come up, but make sure you still squeeze the butt when you get to the top. Okay, now we can get, let's put our chairs back. So feet are shoulder width apart. Knees stay directly over the heels. Hips are going to go back. Knees are not going to push forward. Chest is going to fold down. So we're going to inhale. Hands come to shoulder height. Elbows get heavy. Wrists get heavy. Fingers get heavy and we sink. Inhale. And exhale. Good. The hands move a little bit away from you as you inhale and a little bit towards the hips as you exhale. So they're not just going up and down, they're also coming in. When you inhale, they move away and towards you. Good. Try to feel that movement coming from the ground. As you inhale, you push the ground away with your feet. You can go at your own pace. And as you exhale, feel the heels get heavier and you're sinking into the ground. Try not to push the knees forward at all if you can. Try to go back with the hips. So. You can go down all the way if you've got the leg strength, or you can stay tall. Either way, the knees don't go forward. The hips go back. Each time you sink, try to feel a little bit of your gravity sink to the hips and the belly. Last one. Okay. And that nice deep stance that you've got, or that slightly bent knee stance, that perfect Uji posture. Bring the hands to the belly now. 
and notice that your body knows exactly how to find Uji posture or it's a little bit easier than it was before. That pelvis is tucked, that chest is down, the shoulders are relaxed, the chin is back, the crown is up and you feel stable, you feel firm on your feet. It's going to be hard to knock you over now, right? Okay. Take a, give it a shake out. Take a quick sh sip of water and then we'll get into the final leg. One practical mm -hmm. moving question. Mm -hmm. what, what way should I bend down when I have to pick something up off the floor, which is all the time? I'll talk to you after class if okay. you've got a moment, okay? Yeah. Sure. Um, okay. So, we're going to review return to fetal position. So, we're going to inhale. So, feet are slightly turned out, uh, heels are shoulder width apart and then you're gonna exhale. So for the exhale, you squeeze the fists, you tuck the tailbone, you bring the elbows down towards the hips. If you can't make that all the way, it's okay, stay tall. But the important thing is engaging that core muscle and tucking that pelvis. And then inhale up again. Exhale. Squeeze the belly, inhale. You don't have to fold forward too much from the spine. It's really more about just engaging the core. So inhale. If you want a challenge, you can sink a little bit deeper. Inhale. Whether you're standing tall or sinking deep, you want to make sure that the knees bend. One more. and then rise up. Okay, so you remember your stomach muscles now, high stomach muscles. Um, so we're gonna do, we're gonna advance that, and we're gonna do golden rooster stands on one leg. So, feet shoulder width apart, remember your belly, shift over, bring the foot in. Sternum over navel, over center of uh, pelvis, over heel, stacked nice and strong. Take a deep breath in. Drop the chest as you exhale, drop the shoulders. Another deep breath in. Tighten the core and bring that foot up. As high as you can. If you can only bring it an inch off the ground, that's okay. So, but try to just hover above the ground if you can. Anytime you need to find your stability, you need to touch that toe, feel that center of gravity again, it's okay. And then step out to the heel, place the toe, shift over, bring the other toe in, find that center, feel your feet rooted into, a ground, into the ground like a tree, Deep breath in, dropping the chest, tucking the tailbone, tightening the core, another breath in. Tighten those core muscles and lift. Only as high as you're comfortable. Anytime you need to, you can find your center of gravity, it's okay. Pick a spot on the floor a little ways away from you and stare at that spot thinking of it like a tether and then whenever you need to place the heel shift the weight over slowly bring in the other toe now if you want a challenge you can add a hand movement so <laughs> you can stay here that's fine <laughs> that's fine if you're staying here that's fine but I will show you the progression of this too so hands come to the center of the belly take a deep breath in Tighten the core, drop the chest, tuck the tailbone. Golden rooster stands on one leg. And then bring that heel down slowly without any weight on it. Then shift over. Inhale. Tuck the tailbone, drop the belly as you exhale. Golden rooster stands on leg. 
Then bringing that heel down, shifting over. Bring that foot in, find your center, find your root. Deep breath in. When you exhale, relax the chest, tuck the tailbone, squeeze the belly. Golden rooster stands on one leg. Place that heel slowly, shift over, inhale. Exhale, squeeze the belly and come down. Good. Good job, guys. You did great. Do you feel proud of yourselves? Okay, you should. Okay, so the last uh, Qigong exercise we're going to do before we do the closing is grinding tofu. It's a very grounding exercise. So you're going to stand in a bow stance. So one foot is to the front, um, the other one is behind it, so your feet are staggered, right? They're about, you've got about a shoulder distance from side to side and about a shoulder distance from front to back. So make them a little bit wider for me. So not, not a little bit out to the side. So bring this foot out over here a little bit. That's it. Are you okay? Okay. And then make sure that the knees are soft and the hips are more or less to the front. Um, now you want to be careful not to push that knee forward. So if you collapse the hips, if you relax the hips, that knee is going to push over the toe. So if you keep the hips to the front when you've got most of your weight or 60% of your weight on the front, you're not going to have to worry about that knee. Take a deep breath in and relax. So about 60% of the weight on the front. And we're gonna shift our weight onto that back leg, turning the hips in the direction of that leg, pulling that hip back, then turn the hips to the front as you push forward. Inhale, shifting back. Exhale, shifting forward. Inhale, shifting back. Keeping both feet grounded, exhale, shifting forward. So both feet stay flat. Give yourself a little bit more side to side room. So, um, so you're kind of here, I want you to just slide that front foot out. Um, that's fine. Yep, so the front foot goes over here and a little bit to the side. That's it. Now you're gonna feel more sturdy. You've, you're also a little bit on a tight rope. So <clears throat> I don't want you to be on a balance beam. I want you to be on train tracks, if that makes sense, okay? So shifting the weight forward, sure. Inhale, sink back. Exhale, Not, don't over twist. The hips just point in the direction of the front foot and then they point in the direction of the back toes. So you can add hands. Exhale, pushing forward. Inhale, they come. They stay in front of you, then they come towards you. And you exhale, pushing forward. Inhale, exhale. <coughs> Inhaling and exhale. If you go and you Google grinding soybeans with stone, then you'll see where this exercise comes from. You can close the eyes if you feel comfortable. Hands just float back, they come towards the hips and then you press away. Imagine that as you're falling back and inhaling, you're gathering good energy, healing energy, strength. And as you push forward and exhale, you push away anything you don't need negativity, disease, pain, discomfort, anger, stress. Feeling the heaviness as you push forward and the lightness as you fall back. Keeping the tension out of the shoulders, keeping the elbows soft, the wrists stay soft. Just 
just moving with the breath. Good. So the next time you get to your back foot, bring the front foot in. Step it out a little bit wider. Shift over. So your back foot is now your new front foot. So you still have your feet staggered like this. Um, about So the front one is a little bit in front of you and with the toes to the front, the other one is out a little bit. Uh, make sure you're on train track, so I want your front foot over there. Okay, and a little bit to the side, but don't move the back foot. Don't come along with the back foot now. Okay, okay. But you do want, a l if it feels too, too wide, then make it a little bit shorter, but go out to the side a little bit. So you do want that side to side that distance too. So we're gonna hips forward when you're on that front knee. Sinking, turning the hips to the back foot as you sink back. Turn them forward, push. Inhale, hips point towards the back toes and they point to the front before you push forward. Good. You can add the hands anytime you feel ready. Moving with your breath. Gathering good things as you fall back and inhale. And releasing things you don't need as you push forward and exhale. Elbows stay soft, wrists stay soft, shoulders stay soft. Feel that energy as you're pushing forward. It comes from that back heel. It's like you're pouncing like a cat. You're connected to the ground. You're stable. You're strong. Going straight in the direction that your toes are pointing. Keeping the crown of the head erect, the pelvis tucked, the spine as straight as you can make it, chest down, shoulders relaxed. One more, inhale, exhale, shift the weight forward, bring the feet side by side. Walk them a little bit wider. We're gonna do the closing breath. So as deep as you wanna go, you can stay up tall. Um, whichever version you wanna do, make sure that your knees point in the direction of your toes. You're not rolling your feet. The hips go back as you inhale. So. Inhaling, palms rise up. Exhale, they come towards you through the center and down. Grounding anything you don't need. Inhale. Exhale. Inhale. Exhale. I'm gonna do two more. Gather fresh breath, healing chi. Wash it down through you. Palms down. Walk the feet together. Palms to the front. Shift to your right. Bring your left foot in. Your right hand makes a fist. Your left hand covers it. We bow from the hips. Thank you for being here. My pleasure. Okay. So I had a question if anybody wants to stick around for the answer. So your question was if you need to bend over to pick something up, how should you bend? Do you want to answer that one? <laughs> Do you want to answer? <laughs> Which one? 
If you want to bend over to pick something up, how should oh, you yes, bend? I can. I can do it. <laughs> so um, <laughs> let, let, me, let me do it in any case. Um, so it depends on your ability. The safest way to bend for your back um, to protect the back is to make sure that the knees stay soft and to bend from the hips, keeping the back straight and pushing the hips back. Um, if you can, if you've got the leg strength, you can go down like that. So if that is not something, is that something you can do? Is there anybody that can't do, can't do that, can't reach the floor in this position? So feet wide or a little bit wider than normal, toes pushing out in the direction uh, in, at 45 degrees, knees going in the direction of the toes, and you're bending from the hips, allowing the chest to go down. So the chest is kind of between the knees when you're at the bottom, and the hips are back, and then you can reach the floor that way. That's the safest way to bend down and pick something up from the ground. Because if you're bending from the waist, which most people do, they're bending the middle of the, the back, that's how you throw your back out especially if it's a heavy thing. Oh, I see you know. <laughs> okay, any other questions like that? Okay, awesome. You. You're welcome. Thank you.